I'm Dr. Shelley Weichman. I'm the psychologist here at the Burn Center at Harborview Medical Center. Like many people here, I specialize in the management of pain. Managing your pain is important to us. Our team's goal is to help you manage your pain so that you can participate in the activities responsible for your healing, such as sleeping, wound care, range of motion exercises, and stretching. This video will help you understand the different types of burn pain and the options available to you to manage that pain. Hi, my name is uh, Rick Rimes. I'm from Prosser, Washington. And about nine weeks ago, um, as I was preparing our fire pit, I was standing next to it with a gas can in my hand and the fumes exploded, causing a massive fireball, um, that which resulted in second degree burns to my right forearm, the whole right side of my face, and uh, second and third degree burns to my lower left leg, uh, which resulted in having multiple skin grafts. Pain is a very personal experience. Two people can have the exact same burn injury, but experience pain in a very different way. Burn injury damages the skin and the nerves on the surface of your body. As your burn injury heals, it can cause pain. Once your skin is healed, the pain can decrease, but there might be residual pain because the nerves need to regenerate and need to relearn new sensations. The treatments that help to heal a burn can also cause pain, such as wound care, range of motion exercises, and physical activity. There are different types of burn pain, and each type of pain is managed differently. For example, procedural pain is pain that is associated with different procedures, such as wound care or stretching. The duration is typically short, but the intensity might be higher. Background pain is pain that's always present while you're awake. The intensity might be low, but the duration might be longer. And breakthrough pain is the type of pain that spikes randomly throughout the day or evening. The intensity might be high, but the duration is very short. And each of these types of pain are managed differently. We want you to be informed about what to expect. We are gonna work closely with you to help pick the technique that works best with the type of pain you're having and with your coping style. There are a lot of different techniques that don't involve medication that have been very effective. These techniques include imagery, distraction, relaxation, and even hypnosis. And there are no side effects to these techniques. We also use a combination of different medications. These can include acetaminophen like Tylenol, NSAIDs like ibuprofen, nerve pain medication, and even opioids. There are a lot of side effects and risks associated with opioids. However, it might be the best option to manage your pain. If we decide that opiates are the best option, then we'll work closely with you to make sure that they're prescribed in a safe way. For me, I made a conscious effort not to take uh, the, the stronger pain medications such as oxycodone. Um, I believe that uh, there's personal responsibility to reassess your pain levels. Um, that way, you understand. You know that way you can determine whether you can get away with Tylenol and ibuprofen uh, versus you know taking uh, something that might take an hour to kick in for a five-minute pain sensation. Your pain will change throughout your hospitalization, and therefore the techniques that we use are going to change as well. We're going to continually work with you to assess the intensity of your pain and to figure out which techniques are working best for you. We can't take away all your pain, but we will work closely with you to find the best management strategy possible to allow you to participate in the activities responsible for your healing, such as your wound care, your range of motion exercises, and your sleep.